people say that sugar, sugar, carbohydrates is sugar. So, so what is it? A carbohydrate is a sugar. That sugar is a stimulant and you're on drugs when you're on sugar. Well, the brain runs on sugar. The brain doesn't run on caffeine or Ritalin or Adderall or cocaine or whatever the other central nervous stimulants things are. You know, these are drugs. Sugar is a nutrient, not a drug. So when you have your rice and your fruit and your refined sugar, your glucose, they're essentially glucose and fructose. When you have rice, a bag of rice is a bag of glucose. A bag of fruit hanging off a tree is a bag of glucose and fructose. Refined sugar is glucose and fructose. All right? Maple syrup, glucose and fructose. Agave syrup, glucose and fructose. High fructose corn syrup, glucose and fructose. Organic tree ripened magical mangoes, glucose and fructose. That's what it is. The nutrients, you know, it's a nutrient. It's a calo calorie, you know, it's a chloronutrient, if you want to call it that. Drugs are fucking drugs, man. And if you have them, understand them, that they're not really a health thing. So when the Gregor fans out there are smashing in that green tea to function, they're running on drugs. And as soon as you pull the stimulants out of that lifestyle, people, they're done, they're crashing. They're pepped up on stims all the time. Green tea, green tea, Ritalin, Ritalin, Adderall, you know, coffee, all these things. I've used myself so I can speak with personal experience. It's not me just going, I read a book, I went to uni. This is real life experience. And when I see people introducing stimulants such as green tea, caffeine, Ritalin, Adderall, all these things back into their daily or even weekly routine, I see people's mental state going down. The cat's back. The cat's back. You know, I see people just declining. You know? Would you give Ritalin to a baby? Would you give coffee to a baby? I wouldn't. Some people fucking would. Would you give Coke or Red Bull to a baby? I wouldn't. Wouldn't give to a toddler either. Wouldn't even give to a kid. People are doing that every day. I'd give them bread. I'd give them fruit. I'd give them sugars. I'd give them breast milk. What's breast milk? Sugar in there. You know what I mean? Fats and proteins. Sugar is a nutrient. Carbohydrate is a nutrient. So when in the sun, sugar's a drug. It's a white poison. Sugar is just dehydrated vegetable juice. You know what I mean? This is like, this looks like sugar cane. It's just a sweet version of grass. That's what sugar is. Sugar is grass nectar. <laughs> Imagine they started calling it grass nectar. But oh, I can have nectar. I can have coconut nectar. It's fucking sugar. Same thing. Oh, it's got nutrients in it though. Nanograms of nutrients. The nutrients comes from your fresh fruits and vegetables, man. And your rice and your refined sugar and your tin beans can give you some calories and fiber. But the fresh food, that's where the nutrition is, the nutrients. Cat, stop eating, stop eating plastic. So yeah, this is just the deal here. This is what we're living in. We live in this crazy world where we got to understand the mechanics of something, understand how insulin works, understand how leptin and ghrelin work, understand insulin resistance, understand leptin resistance, understand how your, how your hormones work, you understand what your brain runs on and how serotonin and all that stuff works. You know, Understand the mechanics of stuff. You don't need to go to university for that. You don't need to pay some doctor 500 bucks or a zillion, whatever. You know what I mean? This is basic human physiology. Anyone can understand it. You can, if you can't explain the concepts to an eight-year-old kid, it's, yeah, then it's too complicated. It's unsustainable advice. So anyway, I like to look at mechanics, and that's why you see all Drew Knight's girlfriends, man, over the history of the last 10 years of me on YouTube, they all end up super fucking hot, or they stay super fucking hot. None of them gets fat. No one gets fat following my advice. My advice, the real deal. You know, We all get lean, we all get fitter. We all overcome eating issues or drug dependence, etc. This is how it is, man. Because when you increase your carbohydrates, your, decrease, your in interest in stimulants drops down. When you decrease carbohydrates, stimulant, just read, go jo join these forums, man, and see how much fucking green tea and coffee and Ritalin people are popping every day. I don't do coffee, I do cacao. I don't do caffeine, I do Ritalin. I don't do Ritalin, I do Adderall. I don't do cocaine, I do methamphetamine, aka Adderall. Yeah, it's all central nervous stimulant, man. They're all with the same shit. Some are a bit stronger, some are a bit like packaged in organic labels. Green tea poof, gives you a buzz. Cocaine gives you a buzz. A lot stronger, but it's just still the same triggers in the brain. It's just micro dosing. So that's just, you know, and understand it. Do those things if you want to do. I'm not saying here to, you know, punish people or whatever, but I want to explain to people what's actually sustainable. Cutting your carbohydrates out, cutting your fruit or your starch or your sugar, it's going to lead to some sort of eating disordered eating issue or whatever or stimulant dependence later on you see it on the raw food people when i was raw food as well it's like you start smashing in the nuts you know or you have some steamed rice and you feel there's all this guilt oh my god i had steamed rice oh my god it's the end of the world no actually now you're fucking carved up you can go do some work you know oh, i had sugar in my smoothie oh my god i'm a sugar addict 
No, now you've got some energy to go and do some shit. Got some fuel to go and sleep properly, have better hormonal function. And that's another thing with when people introduce more stimulants, then their hormones start to go out of whack. You know? Hormones start to go out of whack. Testosterone drops, estrogens drop. And you see it on Instagram all the time, man. You see it all the time. It's really, really sad. So I just recommend people be careful with the stims you use. You know? Be careful with that. Respect them. Know when to use them, when not to use them. If you need more sleep, don't use any stimulants. If you're tired, don't use stims. If you're dehydrated, don't use stims. If you're hungry, don't use stims. You know, if you use them for a race, okay. But understand, understand that if it's hot weather, stimulants won't help you. You know, stimulants won't replace good sleep, good carbohydrate content, good water, etc. Sufficient carbohydrate content, I should say, because everyone's what good carbs and bad carbs are is different personal preferences. There, sufficient. If you're eating 10 grams of carbs per kilo of body weight per day. That's a good start. And you might need more than that. You might need a little bit less than that. But go with that. 10 grams of carbs per kilo of body weight per day from rice, sugar, and fruit. You know, do that and go up and down from that. You might go, oh, this is too much fruit. I can't, oh, I can't stomach that. Or you might go, oh my God, now I finally got some fucking fuel to be a good dad, be a good mom, be a good daughter, be a good lover, worker, boss, employee, entre entrepreneur, Gary V wannabe, whatever. You know? So yeah, the carbs, that's definitely, that's definitely magic there, man. So whether it's your, your vegan white bread, whether it's your rice and your sugar and your fruit, or all of those, that, having that variety is really important, I find. Potatoes, corn, quinoa, rice, fruit, sugar. Never be under carb, man. <laughs> Once you're under carb, productivity's dropping off, you're getting hangry, you're getting moody, can't sleep properly, need more stims. Life sucks, man. And you, you can disagree with me all you want, but you're still going to be wrong. And go on the McGregor forums, go to the McDougal forums, and read the problems people have. Oh, I need something sweet, oh, I had some sugar, I feel guilty now. Can you imagine the life quality you have? Feeling guilty because you had a can of baked beans that had fucking sugar in it? Or a bit of salt? Drop your salt out of your diet and watch your blood pressure drop down. You, you won't be an athlete on no sugar, no salt. No oil, we don't need that. You know, oil is very, very debatable, but sugar and salt, you need a little bit of salt in your diet. Keep your blood pressure up. You know, And sugar, you need a lot. You need a lot. Especially when you want to be really productive and cut the fat right back and watch insulin sensitivity go right up. Watch the documentary What the Health and look at the sugar increase in, uh, in your daily diet and watch your performance go up and then drop your fat intake and watch just, you, know, you have more, you understand what, why I'm always rambling, rambling, rambling and that. And you understand why the women I coach in my life on social media, they start going up, their fitness starts going up. There's sanity, everything starts going up. You know? You're like, you're not fucking sane yourself, bro. How can you teach someone to be sane? Look at you. You're a fucking freak show doing right. <laughs> I agree, that's true. But there's one thing I do have, as I get older, more and more I have a lot more emotional stability and a lot more participation in a daily reality. And I get smashed on social media, man. I get drilled, my motherfuckers out there. They'd make up slanderous and all sorts of crazy shit. Doing right as a rapist, he's a murderer, he's a drug dealer, he's a fucking you know, he's this and he's that and he's all sorts of stuff. They make websites about me and videos about me and they ring up fucking all sorts of people about me, you know? They, they never go to the police because <laughs> you get arrested for false false uh, stories there. But So anyway, I, I get to test out my theories about nutrition of carbohydrate sufficiency and mental stability. And everyone I see who has all these breakdowns and who's just overwhelmingly depressed or whatever, they've always got this carbohydrate insufficiency and then they're having the coffee and then the coffee isn't a depressant Coffee makes you feel depressed the next day when you're coming down, you know, because your serotonin and dopamine's all out. And you'll see people, when they increase the caffeine, they increase the depression every fucking time, you know? You increase it every time, man. And then when you get off, you feel really fucked up. And there's a phase you've got to go through, you know? You just got to muscle through it, emotional muscle, build it through. Do some long rides. Probably the best thing I ever did for my life, accidentally, was giving up stimulants, caffeine, everything, you know, for a number, number of years. And the last time I had a cup of coffee was 1999. And I remember doing, you know, so long, I think it was like four years before I had a cup of tea. And doing really long rides with no stims. I rode across Australia with no stims, no caffeine, no tea, no chocolate, nothing. And that just had a lot of, you know, <laughs> mental like, episodes out there where you just like, really, you know, the winds get you and it's just, you know, long straight roads. And you're like, actually, this ain't too fucking bad. This is first world fucking problems. But the problems come in thicker and faster when you don't have any drugs in your system, right? Because when you're on drugs, you're all high and on your coffee high, and you're like, <laughs> buzzing. But when there's no drugs in your system, it's just you and the music and the road and the headwinds and the wedge-tailed eagles 
all of a sudden, you have to deal with shit in your head, you know? You got a sore knee or it's windy or you got a fucking saddle sore, just things come on and you, you build more emotional muscle. So the fastest way to build emotional muscle is no stims, super long rides. What's long for you might be short for me or vice versa. A long ride is something that you haven't done before. You know, maybe riding across the state or across the suburb or whatever. Do these long rides without any stimulants. Just carb up, drink with water, you know, grab a couple of my ebooks and learn how to eat. Drinkride.com. And do these long rides, man. And they are really fucking transformative. And I'll see it in people. But the secret is don't use any stims. And when you use the stims, long rides are fucking easy. I can do a 600k ride any day of the week. Just bang, bang, bang and go ride. Not hard. But doing that without any stimulants, that's an emotional challenge because you have this like roller coaster of thoughts come through and you, you're dealing with them one by one. Stimulants just bulldoze any of those emotional thoughts until you come clean again. And you're like, oh my God, I need some more. But if you, don't, if you never deal with your emotional demons, then they get bigger and stronger and your emotional muscle gets weaker and smaller. You know, simple as that. So if you want to overcome these things, then just face them full on. You, in my opinion, you don't need the shit the doctors prescribe you. If you think you do, then you're a patient for life and they like that. They're like, yeah, this is good. We've got you for customer for life. Little pills that make us pennies to make and we sell them for God knows how much. I disagree with that whole system, man. It's, I, see, I don't see good things coming out of that. I see, you know, and I understand that 99% 99 of people out there don't want solutions. They want comforters. You know? They just want to be comforted. You know, I, want, I don't want to be told the truth, Harley. And that's why I always have, you know, just a bare bones sort of audience, subscribers, etc. Because I understand I could bullshit people and sell them all sorts of little pills and have these fucking non-profit charities and all stuff like that. You know, what people want to believe in. But uh, I wouldn't be, feel good about doing that. You know? But people, I'd rather be out there to give people solutions. Because that's what I wanted in my life. I didn't want comforters, man. And so I'm trying to appeal to the people who think like me, who want solutions. They don't want a comforter. They want to fucking take control, get some fucking action going, and get some real fucking results relative to their own you know, genetic potential or lifestyle potential or their own situational potential. Not everyone lives in Australia or America or Thailand or the Bahamas. Some of us are in really fucking tough areas. We live in maybe you know certain parts of Asia or Africa or even India where there's you know civil wars and shit going down. And it's it's not so easy just to you know, go to Thailand and have a holiday or whatever. Or, become a digital nomad it's possible but it's a fucking lot harder if you're watching this you've probably got those opportunities but uh you know, think of what must be life like in life to really to live in like a refugee camp in you know bangladesh or burma or even parts of thailand etc or you know that's fucking tough man there's, there's billions of people out there every day who have it really fucking tough so when you think you got life tough just sit down and reflect and go do i really have tough problems in my life you know and the bigger picture, no, you don't. You know, it might be tough in your head. You might be feeling depressed and ripped off and hurt. But man, I guarantee you, there's someone out there with harder problems than you have or I have. Oh, my nose is itchy. But I've got a nose. I'm grateful for it. It's hard. The people out there are doing it really fucking tough, and they're still getting through it. And they're not any presents. They're not on any caffeines or whatever. They're just fucking turning up and getting it fucking done. So I seek inspiration people like that and understand there's people out there today who are just really fucking struggling mentally and physically, but they get through another fucking day and they don't whine, they don't bitch, they don't complain, they just get it fucking done. And they're living in a shack that was made out of, you know, bits of tin they got from the fucking street, you know. They love it, they're, they're grateful for it, you know. And uh, I know people who live in amazing houses and they've got no gratitude and they're pressed as fuck. Pills, alcohol fucked up relationships with people narcissism all sorts of stuff never happy never content never gratitude never grateful and and uh, and that's, that's that's fucking hell man that is hell to live that way that's hell to live that way anyway bit of a long bid thanks for watching hopefully you got something out of it if you did give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down unsubscribe or subscribe hit notifications or don't Leave some questions down below. If you want more information, check out durinata.com. Check out those ebooks. I've written them to be easy to read, easy to uptake, and they fucking work. So many examples out there, people really take control of their life. So I uh, hope you join those ranks. And I don't want you to buy my ebooks and read them. I want you to fucking take action on them. You know, and they're constantly updated. I update them all the time with new tips and hints. If you bought them last year, you'll get the free up you'll get an email notification. And you get the free update. Anyway, I'm going to go carb the fuck up, have some of my 
44 cent bread. Carbs, man. I love my fruit. I love my starches. I love my sugars. I love that I get to eat so much volume of food every day. I get to eat so much variety of stuff. There's always some new vegan carbohydrate or vegan food out there. And I love having every meal with zero guilt. Zero guilt where I just get to go, ah, oh, I'm got some carbs, I'm gonna carb the fuck up. You know, and, and uh, there's no better way to live in my opinion. The massive participation in your daily reality is achieved by carbon the fuck up, getting your sleep, and getting your water, and getting off your stims. Use them not at all, or use them very, 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 very sparingly. And they work, when you do use them, they work even better. Daily stimulant usage, weekly stimulant usage, is something I'm definitely not, not for.